it might seem more intuitive to go straight from spore into bulk substrate. However, if you want exponential growth out of your mycelium, this is the way to do that. What's up, mushroom fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today, we're gonna talk about grain spawn. So you can buy pre-made grain spawn, but I don't suggest that route because it's gonna eat into your margins and then you'll be at the whim of that grain spawn producer. As opposed to buying grain spawn, I suggest that you learn how to make it in-house. I'm gonna cover how to source your grain spawn, how to hydrate it, how to sterilize it, and a special technique for obtaining exponential growth that I use on my farm. If you'd like to learn more details about these specific steps, check out our ebook, Growing Gourmet Mushrooms for Market. So now that you've decided to make your own grain spawn in house, you're going to have to source that grain spawn. So the easy and cheap way is to source spent grains from a brewery or a distillery. I did that very early in my journey and the caveat to sourcing free spent grains is that it's going to have a very short shelf life. So once those grains are hydrated, other organisms are going to start competing against what would be mycelium for the nutrients in that grain. So you probably have about 12 to 15 hours after you get spent grain to run it through your sterilization process. Another approach to source your grain is going to be getting raw grains from a supplier. If you're gonna go the big box store route, you can check out Murdoch's, Ace Hardware, Tractor Supply, or any animal feed store, and they should be able to find help you find a wide variety of different grains like oats, wheat bran, rice, or millet. Any animal feed store will typically have uh, suppliers for all of these that are consistent throughout the season. So definitely, Check your pricing and uh, check out some different stores in your local area, but it shouldn't be too difficult to find a source for your grains. All right, so after you sourced your grain, you're going to need to come up with a plan on how to prep your grain spawn. So there's a few different approaches to do this. So. The first way is an overnight soak and sterilization. That would require a little bit more planning, um, but it's definitely the easiest and the lowest energy way to make grain spawn. So this is what I do on my farm, is a day before I know I have to sterilize my grain, I will cover it completely with water and then let it soak overnight. So overnight, the grain is going to absorb all that water until it gets to field capacity. And then you, you'll have to rinse off the grain and all that leftover water that didn't get absorbed into the grain. And then you can bag it and sterilize it like normal. The second approach is going to be a soak and simmer and then sterilize. So you can speed up this process of hydration by boiling the grain. So what I rec would recommend doing if you're tight on time is you can take your grains, put them into a large pot or a large kettle and fill it till it's past the, uh, the upper level of the grain and with some extra water above that or beyond that because as the grains hydrate, uh, that water level is gonna decrease. So maybe you wanna fill it 70% of the way with grain, 100% with water. Then you're gonna bring that up to a boil and maybe within about 20 or 30 minutes, you can take the heat off and that way your grains will be fully hydrated. The caveat to this method is you don't wanna simmer it too long because that could burst the grains. And when you have too many bur burst grains in your grain spawn, it leaves 
the uh, inside nutrients vulnerable to contaminants. So there's a very fine line between hydrating your grains as much as possible and having burst grains, which is going to be a liability because of contamination. And there's a third method of grain spawn prep, which is the no soak, no simmer method. So in this method, you'll add the proper amounts of grain and then you'll add the correct amount of water to hydrate those grains to about 60 to 65% relative hydration. If you're interested in a recipe for this, you can check out my no soak, no simmer video. It's really gonna depend on what types of grain that you use to come up with a recipe where you would add a dry amount of grains, a specific amount of water to the bag, and then sterilize it in real time. So you're utilizing the heat from that sterilization process to hydrate those grains. And that's gonna be the most efficient way to produce your grain spawn. So now that you've chosen your procedure to make your grain spawn, um, there's another difference that you can do in your process, and that is choosing a grain jar versus a grain bag. So jars are reusable, so you only have to make an investment one time, but cleaning them is going to slow you down and could create a bottleneck. So if you don't have a big backstock of jars, then you're constantly going to be cleaning your jars and then reusing them as opposed to bags, which are not reusable and they may take a little bit longer to colonize, especially if you're using a larger bag, like a five pound or a 10 pound grain spawn bag. So this is a decision that you have to make on your farm. If you want to be more sustainable, I would choose the jars. Or if you're trying to be more efficient, then I would use bags. On my farm, I've discovered kind of a hybrid method where I use both jars and bags. The reason why I like to use jars and bags is a uh, scheduling issue. So when you have five pound grain bags, there's a larger variance of time between when those bags are fully colonized. So maybe the first bag in that batch will colonize within five days, and then the last bat bag in that batch might not colonize until the seventh day. To decrease that window of variance, I implemented a middle process of using a half pint jar to fully colonize before I go into my five pound bag. Now what that does is it decreases the variance in time from when that jar is fully colonized so that I can have a half step to the five pound bag. And if you extrapolate that, what it does is it makes it so that I have a more consistent harvest on the weekends, which that's when my farmer's markets are. If you wanna have more control over the timing of your crop, then by reducing the volume of your grain spawn, you have a less variance in the time that it takes to fully colonize that grain jar. So I hope that makes sense, but essentially I'm adding a half a step to hold that fully colonized jar so that I have a more consistent schedule, which means that there's more consistent harvest. Thanks for watching this video. If you want more information about these specific processes, check out our ebook, Growing Gourmet Mushrooms for Market. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and until next time, much love.